In any standard data projects, data is ingested from multiple source location. It then moves to staging layer, curated layer and finally reaches to consumption layer for end user analytics. Data movement from left to right has to happen within a stipulated time period. There are set of SQL statements applies data transformation before it moves forward. And this end-to-end -end process of data ingestion, transformation and loading is called ETL. To make this flow running automatically every day, you need something which can help you to orchestrate that. Snowflake provides an object called task and task tree which can help to build continuous ETL workflow. A data project can have a complex orchestration requirement for data movement that can combine many DML and transformation operation that may invoke many complex SQL script running in parallel or in a sequential manner for a particular purpose. Such complex orchestration can be achieved using task and task tree in Snowflake and it can also be scheduled to run on a certain frequency to meet SLA or data availability for downstream applications. So what else you need to know about the task objects and task tree? Task tree is a DAG or something very different. Can I clone a task and create a new one? Task is a serverless compute or need a virtual warehouse. Can task be integrated with a stream object? How task manages scheduling? How many tasks a task tree can have? So your snowflake knowledge is incomplete if you do not know task and if you are a smart data professional, stay with me until the end of this video and practice everything about task object and learn many more interesting facts and its limitation. So welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this real jumpstart course for Snowflake data professional. The last 17 episodes in this series already covered from history to architecture, data loading, micro partition, time travel, cloning, stream and many more important concepts. This episode, episode 18th, will primarily focus on task and task tree objects or call it workflow orchestration technique within Snowflake. We will practice everything using Snowflake free trial edition and have hands-on exercise to cover all the concepts listed in this slide. Let's understand what is task and how does it work. Task is a first class object residing within a schema. The SQL syntax is very simple and clean for a standalone task. Provide a task name followed by a warehouse name at what frequency the task should run and what SQL statement it should execute. This DDL says that my task should use compute virtual warehouse to run the insert statement and it should run every minute from the time it is active. So if the task is started at quarter past nine, then its first schedule will be at 16 past nine 17 past 9, 18 past 9 and so on. Don't think that it will run on a first minute or every hour. For that, we have a different syntax that is called cron based syntax. This syntax is called non cron based syntax. The task can take only one single statement. It could be single inline SQL text or calling a stored procedure. Task does not allow multiple SQL statements and if that is required, you have to wrap all those SQL statement inside a stored procedure and call the stored procedure from this task. And this is how the syntax looks like. Use the keyword called followed by the stored proc name and provide the parameter if applicable. Let's understand how standard tasks can be scheduled using a cron based scheduling approach. If you want to run your task on a certain frequency like fifth minute of every hour on a Sunday, then you can use this cron style and we will practice it during our live session. So this is the SQL syntax for cron based scheduling. What if you don't want to give a user defined warehouse and in that case you can use a server less task. The DDL syntax is very similar and warehouse parameter is replaced by user underscore task underscore managed underscore initial underscore warehouse underscore size and you have to give the initial warehouse size. It doesn't mean that it will always run with extra small warehouse. It will start with extra small and if it sees that it needs more capacity, it will go for a bigger virtual warehouse. This is called serverless task in Snowflake and this was recently introduced. Let's understand how task tree works and how it supports a workflow to orchestrate your complex ETL execution. Assume we have three tasks and they follow this execution approach where task A finishes first, as soon as it finishes, task B and task C start in parallel. If you have to achieve this kind of workflow, task tree come into the picture and the DDL statement just need one additional attribute called after in your child node. If you see the DDL, the task A is a standard task and as soon as you 
use after word other child task and associate it with the task A. The task A become the parent or a root task and other task become child task. The child task does not need any schedule as it start right after task A or root task. In this example, the task A is further folk in task B and task C. However, you cannot merge task B or a task C to a task D. And that's why there is a difference between a DAG approach versus task D approach in Snowflake. Maybe in future, they will make it possible. But as on today, this is not possible. And task tree also has certain limitation. You cannot add infinite number of children within the task. Before we move to the next section, I have an important question to ask. Do you want to have mastery in the Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse? I think you should be. There is a lot of great opportunities out there if you know Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse. I have been adding a lot of videos to help the Snowflake community to learn Snowflake besides Snowflake certifications. The feedback I got from my audience way high than my expectations. Folks are getting certified at first attempt and scoring close to 100%. Data engineers, leads, architects, and even data managers are learning from my free content. You don't need to buy any expensive courses. Check my playlist. It includes complete hands-on Snowflake guide, SnowPro certification guide, important mock questions for certification, key SQL function series, Snowflake Python and connector series, and many more videos are on your way. So press the like button if there is anything valuable in this video for you. So let's open your Snowflake free trial edition and let's learn everything about tasks together. Here I am in Snowflake Web UI. Let me switch my context quickly. So this is my context. Let's create a customer table called customer team, which has handful of field ID, first name, last name, date of birth, active flag, city and insert time. Insert time has a default value as a current timestamp. My customer dim table is created successfully. The table doesn't have any record. Now I am going to create a sequence object which will generate the primary key for my customer dim table. So the customer sequence will start with value 2 and it will have an increment value 2. I am not going to run this select statement for a testing for now. Let it run as a part of DML operation. Next, I am going to create a task object. We have already seen the SQL construct. Here, I have created or replaced task by the task name. I am assigning a warehouse called compute warehouse, which is my default warehouse in my free trial edition. So this would run in every one minute and it will only execute one single insert statement. It will have a sequence value and the timestamp will be generated automatically. So my task is created successfully. Now, couple of limitation I would like to call out. If you try to have more than one SQL statement, task creation will end with an error. Schedule parameter only takes minute. It does not support second or hour. We will see it later. The minimum value is one minute and you cannot go below these numbers. Once task is created, it is by default in suspended state. It has to be resumed before it start functioning as per the definition. So if we try to understand the limitation 4, just because we have created the task does not mean that it will start immediately and it has to be resumed and we will see it how it has to be done. So if I try to see the data in customer dim table, I don't see any record because, because the task is still not active. So how do I know whether my task is active or not? For that, I can run show task command. So I can see task 01 is created under database tips db under schema ch18 and the owner is system admin and it is using compute warehouse it is scheduled to run in every one minute it does not have any predecessor it is right now in the suspended state and the definition on the task has this single insert statement it does not have any condition we will see it later overlapping flag is false so these are the information which can be fetched from the show task sql command I can do the same thing using describe task and let me run this SQL command. It brings exactly the same result. In both the cases, every task has a unique task ID and that unique task ID can be used to track whether the task is running or not running or for any other reporting purpose. 
to resume the task you need to switch your role to the account admin you can also give privileges called execute grant to your role and that role can also do that for a simplicity we will switch the role resume the task and switch back the role to the system admin now my task is resumed if i have to resume a task and if i have to have that privileges i have to switch my role to the account admin and then i have to execute this sql command called grant execute task to my role system admin right now i am not running that now we have resume our task we can go back and run show task command now my task is started now what if you have to alter your task and assign a different warehouse or if you would like to change the schedule from 1 minute to 2 minute you can follow this alter statement alter task followed by the task name and you can use the set keyword and you can change the parameter called set warehouse equals to etl underscore warehouse or set schedule equals to 2 minute it's a very simple standard alter statement you can also clone the task and it's pretty simple so here i can say create task task clone by cloning the task 01 and the moment i create a clone task we have seen in the clone chapter the task will take a suspended state right after its creation we can check that so i can see my task 01 has a state called started however my clone task has a state called suspended if you have not seen my cloning chapter please refer the description section below or the link above in the card now let's understand how the schedule parameter works if i create a task which is called task underscore seconds and specify the schedule in 60 second will it work let's run this sql so this sql ends with an error if we give anything other than minutes either second or hour let's try with one hour so this also ends with error if i try to give half minute which is 30 second can i do that this also ends with an error here if i try to give a negative value will it work let's try that out so anything other than minute it doesn't work now my task is in a started state how can i check its execution history for that snowflake gives a function called task history table function and if you write a sql statement like this select start from a table information schema dot task history where my task name is a task 01 and order by schedule time let me run this command so i can see it has failed four times for some reason i do not know and it cannot execute so let's see so it says that cannot execute task execute task privilege must be granted to the owner role so this is very very important to understand that if you have a role issue or a privileges issues it will not work appropriately so let me fix it now i will tell you why we ended with an error so here the role through which my task is running is a system admin role and i have to make sure that my system admin should be able to execute as well as manage the task for that i have to switch my role to the account admin again and i have to grant execute task execute manage task on account to role system admin once this is executed successfully i will switch my role back to system admin i will wait for some time and i will rerun my task history table function to see that now i can see here the state of my task execution says succeed 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 and succeed and the next task which is schedule would be shown here as the last entry if your task end with an error especially with privileges and all those things it is little difficult to debug the task so make sure that your insert statement is working appropriately or any other stored procedure if you are running through the task should run appropriately now let's see the customer team table now i can see that 2 4 6 8 is being inserted and uh, you can clearly see the time it runs exactly in a 1 minute window so 3 4 5 6 so this is how you can create a task schedule a task change the execution permission and make sure that it runs appropriately let's understand the schedule parameter in the create task sql command so i am going to create a task which will run in every 10 minutes from the time the task is resumed so my task 10 minute is created successfully 
one important thing to remember if we have given the interval as a 10 minutes and if the task starts at 3 minutes past 9 then the task will rerun at 13 past 9 followed by 23 past 9 am and so on so this is how this minute schedule work when we create a task let's say if i give a 5000 minutes does it work let's try it out yes 5000 minute is created successfully so what is the maximum value which can be assigned to this schedule parameter that goes to total 8 days which in minute is 11520 minutes so i am going to create a task which will run in every 8th day from the time the task is resumed so here we go my task with 11520 minute it created successfully what happens if i make it 11521 the SQL error says that cannot set schedule greater than 11,520 minutes. So this is one of the limitation with schedule. So let's see how all the task looks like. So here I can see 1 minute, 10 minute, 5,000 minute, 11,520 minutes and 1 minute which is for the cloned one. All of them are right now suspended. If I go and resume my task, then all the task will start running on this frequency. Now we will see how the using cron keyword works. There are use cases which cannot be achieved using the minute style of scheduling. In that case, we have to go with this cron style of scheduling. So let's see how does it work. The overall SQL command looks exactly same. Only thing is that your schedule parameter takes a different value. It says using cron followed by five stars and it takes the time zone. The first star represent minute. You can specify either zero or 59, zero to 59. For hour, you can specify 0 to 23. For a day, you can specify either 1 to 31 or the last working day of the month. You can also say month from 1 to 12 or Jan to December. Or you can say days of the week like all six days or a Sunday, Saturday or the last day of the week. So this is how this overall five star works. So in this command, I am indicating that run this task every minute only on Sunday and my time zone is Los Angeles. Let's execute this DDL statement. So my task every minute created successfully. Okay. Now let's check the history. What does it say? Let me resume my task. So my task is resumed successfully. Now I would like to see how my task history looks like. And if I run here, show tasks. Now first, let's see how the task definition looks like. Here it is task every minute. And it says schedule using cron. So this is the only part which is changing in this case. And now let's run the task history. So task every minute, it says it is scheduled. And it is scheduled for 13th of February, which is a Sunday. So perfectly fine. It will start from Sunday midnight and it will keep on running throughout the Sunday on every minute. If I have to create a task which runs on every fifth minute on a Sunday, this is how my using cron syntax looks like. So my first star will be replaced by value five and then I would run this task. I resume my task and let me run the task history. So task history says here it will run on Sunday, which is the 13th of February and it will run from the first fifth minute. So this is how it works. Now, if I have to run a task on every fifth minute between nine hours to 17 hours on every Sunday. So this is how the SQL syntax looks like using cron keyword. So I would say the first star will be replaced by value five, which means that every five minutes this will run. This will run starting from nine o'clock until evening five o'clock. And this two star, I'm keeping it empty. And I would say the last one is that every week on Sunday. Now let's run this. My task is resumed. Now let's check the history. Five past 10 would be its first instance running. It will run between nine and 17, excluding the ninth hours and the 17th hours. So this is how it works. So this is how it looks like it works. Now let's understand how the warehouse parameter work with create task SQL statement. So here I am giving a warehouse name, which actually doesn't exist. And let's see how does it behave. So it may happen that you have created a task and the task has been associated with a warehouse 
and mistakenly the warehouse has been dropped or the usage rights from the warehouse has been revoked. What happened in that case? Let's run this SQL command. So it says that non-existent warehouse compute does not exist was specified. So the task creation SQL command validate whether the warehouse exists or not and then only it allows you to create the task. Good. There could be a use cases where you don't want to associate a virtual warehouse with a task. In that case, we can create a task which runs on a serverless mode. That is called user task managed initial warehouse size. So instead of having a warehouse, you can specify this parameter and Snowflake will allocate. So now my task SF provided virtual warehouse is created successfully. Sometime if you do not have execute or manage task privilege, then you would end up with this error saying that you must have execute manage task privileges. So let me describe this task. What it says, the virtual warehouse is null here. Only in the Snowflake provided virtual warehouse, the warehouse value is null. So this is how you can use a Snowflake provided virtual warehouse and that is called serverless task. Next, we will see how we can create a task tree. So the level one is a parent task. It has two children, task 21 and task 22, which we have named as a level two. Then we have a level three, task 31 and 32 goes under task 21. And on other hand, task 33 and task 34 goes under task 22. So this is how the tree looks like. So we'll start with creating a new table called customer tree table. We have added one extra column called level and we'll see how this level column is going to be used followed by we have an insert time. So this is how my customer tree table looks like. So my customer tree table created successfully. I'm going to create a task called parent task 01 and the insert value will have a level one. So whenever this task is executed, it will insert a record and the record will have level one. And this runs on every one minute. Now I'm going to create child task, which is called child task 21. And this does not need any scheduling because this has a keyword called after parent task 01. So let's create that. And this will have a level two child 01. Now I'm going to have another task called child task 22. It will have a level two and child 02. Now level two has two children. I'm going to create a task called child task 31 and this task depend on child task 21 and it will say level three. So my child task 31 is created and this is a level three task and depends on the child task 21. And this is my another child task, which is a child task 32. It depends on task 21. Now I'm going to create child task 33, which depends on child task 22 and another one, another child task 34, level three. Now I'm going to resume my parent task. Before I resume my task, do we have any data in my customer tree table? So my customer tree table doesn't have anything and I'm going to resume my parent task. My parent task is resumed and let me see the show task. Show task shows now my parent task 01 does not have any predecessor. My task 21 and 22 depends on task one. My task 31 and 32 depends on task 21 and my task 33 and 34 depends on task 22. So this is how I have created a task hierarchy. The Snowflake has not yet created any visual graphical representation of that. Even if you go to the snow site, the snow site also does not show the graphical representation of the task tree. Now, one important thing, all this task is in a suspended mode right now and only the parent task is started. Now, one important thing, if you try to resume a child task, it will give you an error message saying that the child task cannot be resumed. And this is how it looks like. So all my children as well as my root task is suspended at this stage. Now I would first resume all the child task followed by the parent task. So I have resumed all the task. Now I can see all my task is running properly. We will wait for some time and see the result into the customer tree table. Now let's run the task history with giving the parent task name and see how it looks like. 
So I see my parent task is scheduled. Now let's see the customer tree result and I'm giving the order by column as an insert time. And I can clearly see that it follows the level one, level two, level three. And you can see also this is on a 57th minute, 39 second, 57th minute, 51 second, 58 minute, 03 second and so on. So this is how you can create a complete task tree. Let's see how can I use a stored procedure with a task. For that, first we are creating a customer table with having an extra column called task name. So this is extra column which I have it called task name, which will record the task name through the insert statement. So my customer underscore s proc table is created. Next, I am going to create a stored procedure which will just insert one record into the table and this is how it looks like we are going to understand how a stored procedure works in snowflake in future chapters so here the language used to create a stored procedure is a javascript this is my sql statement which is just inserting one row here it will take the task name as a task with s proc let me execute this stored procedure my stored procedure is created successfully. It says function insert row in customer as proc successfully created. Not sure why does it call it function. Before I really associate this stored procedure with a task, let me first run this stored procedure and validate whether it insert the record appropriately or not. So the return says true. I can see one record inserted successfully. Now I am creating a task with the name task with s proc and it is actually calling that is dot proc with keyword call followed by stored procedure name. My task is created successfully. Now I am going to alter my task and resume it to make it functional. A statement executed successfully. Now let's check how it looks like. So I can see task with s proc. It has compute virtual warehouse. It is running in every one minute. It does not have any predecessor. The state is started. And if you look into this definition, it has call insert row in customer as proc. So this is only one single SQL statement, which is a stored procedure is being called from this task. We will wait for one or two minutes and I will fast forward. And then we will see how the table looks like. Let's check task history table function with task with s proc as a name here it gives a state called schedule my next run at 2211 and my next schedule is 2212 which is one minute right after this let's wait for one or two minute and then see the result in the customer s proc table so i can see 2212 one record inserted and the task name is task with proc so this is how the stored procedure can be associated with a task and you can have a different stored procedure being invoked from the task tree and achieve a complex ETL workflow. So we have understood how a task object and task tree works and its limitation. But what we have not seen, it's combined usage with stream object and how to automatically move your data forward using stream objects. And that's our next episode, episode 19. That will be a lot of fun seeing your CTC or a Delta data moving forward like a real life data application. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you have been enjoying this Snowflake learning series. And if there is anything you liked in this session, press the like button and leave your comment. Happy learning.